what's going on guys, Arix here, welcome back to another Division 2 video and today I want to show you where you can find all 12 Hunter Masks. If you saw the videos we uploaded earlier on in the week then you'll know that we first found 8 of them and put together a video for that. We then followed up with another one where we found 2 more and now that we've got all 12 I thought instead of just kind of pointing you to 3 different videos I put together one big definitive guide on where to find all 12. So that way you don't need to go looking anywhere else. So if you do enjoy this, then a like will be super appreciated. Comment down below if you have any questions. And of course, if you haven't entered our giveaway for a chance to win a Pokemon Let's Go Nintendo Switch, then be sure to click the link in the description box down below. Now we're going to start off with the brand new one. So if you've seen the other videos, then this is where you want to start. This is for the Ghost and the Spectre Masks. This one is... Probably the most involved and also a little bit annoying if you mess it up and it all revolves around the Washington Monument. So in order to do this the very first thing you want to do is reclaim the monument as a control point. If it is taken you cannot do this because in order to kick this off you need to go down into the loot room which is down the elevator shaft and if it's in enemy control then you can't do that. It's also worth noting that much like pretty much all the other masks, this needs to be done at night. If you want to know how to check your time of day, you can actually go into the menu and hold down F to go to photo mode or whatever it is on console. And on the top right, it tells you the time of day. So in order to kick this off, you need to start from at least 7 p.m. onwards. So once you've done that, first thing you're going to do is you're going to go down the elevator shaft and you're going to go into the loot room. And if you go behind this stone statue, there is a screen and there's a button you can interact with. Upon doing this, it will then show you three different locations on the map. These are locations of three different graves that you need to go and visit, salute, in order to continue this process. So starting with point number one, the top left one, we're going to go over to this location here you see on the map. It is just the bottom right of the other control point. In fact, if you want to be super efficient, you could have pre-taken this control point so you can fast travel to it. But if you basically put your waypointer into the corner, the bottom right corner of the green square that encompasses the control point, that is essentially where the grave is. You go to this location and if you look towards the shipping containers, you will see a grave with a wooden cross. If you go and stand by the grave and you use the salute emote, then this is the first one. You'll know if you've done it right because there'll be a little bit of static on your UI as you're doing this process. So if you salute and it doesn't work, then just maybe do it again, reposition, but that's what you need to do. For the second one, you're going to go over here to the northeast of the monument and you're going to go and put your waypointer to exactly where you see me on the map right now. And if you look towards the monument, that's essentially the direction you want to be facing. You'll find another grave. This one actually doesn't have a cross. The kind of top part or the horizontal part has fallen off, but it's still another grave. Same principle. Salute here. You might actually notice the first time I saluted, it didn't actually give me static. So I actually repositioned and did it again. And then for the third one, you want to go down to the southeast of the monument. This time you are going to go exactly again where I am located on the map right now. Again, facing the monument, you'll basically see the grave between two bushes. And this is your third location. Again, same principle, salute, get the static. And now you can return to the Washington Monument. You go back down the lift, you go back to the screen. And if you interact with the button, you will now see that an orange circle appears on screen. And now this is the first part complete. Now, the important thing to note as well is that with this part complete, if you mess up the next part, you will no longer need to go back and re-salute the graves. With the graves done, that part of this kind of quest, so to speak, is done. That's done forever, so you don't have to worry about that. But for the next part, what you then want to do is you want to go and head to this location you see right now on screen. This is just a little bit northwest of the monument. It's up towards the top. If you go in there and you walk into this area, this sort of enclosed area, you can see there's a couple of areas here that look quite similar. The one you want is the one that actually has the missing person sign as you're walking through. If you go in and you turn right and you look up towards where there's a crane and a shipping crate, you'll see a hunter crouched on the corner. Now this one behaves very differently to any of the other hunters because you essentially get one shot. If you shoot it, you kill it, you get the mask. If you don't, they disappear and they actually respawn in different locations. That's what makes these ones more frustrating. You don't have to fight them like you fought the other ones. This one is a bit more drawn out. But what you want to do, ideally use either the sharpshooter, the sniper, put all your points into maxing out the damage of that signature weapon or use the grenade launcher and you then want to line it up and you want to put in one shot and you want to kill the target. If you mess it up, use the wrong weapon, he'll despawn. What you can do is you can then log out and sometimes he'll be there. If not, you kind of just need to wait a new day cycle. And then what you would do is if you waited for it to become nighttime again, you would go back to the monument, interact with the button. Instead, you would just see the orange circle on screen and you couldn't even revisit this location. Either way, line up a shot. I actually dropped down a booster hive here just to give Socks some extra damage. He got the kill and that'll give you the ghost mask. Now for the other one, the spectre mask, this is actually linked to the one you have just done. So you follow the same process, you do all of the monument stuff in order to get the ghost mask, and then right off the back of that one, it seems you can also get the spectre mask. For this one, what you then wanna do is, much like the last one, you need to go and visit a location and snipe 
the hunter before they disappear and for this one you want to head over to a location just north of the monument this is initially where the hunter seems to spawn most frequently he will spawn on top of this hut on top of this roof now it's important to note that if these hunters see you they will run they will disappear so what you always want to try and do is look at the roof but try to kind of approach them from an angle where maybe they don't necessarily see you clearly they have like a blind spot you're to their side and that'll give you the best opportunity it's also worth noting that they will not spawn if there is activity in the area so that if there are enemy patrols or anything like that you want to clear them out but if you've then gone and got the ghost mask if you then go from that location back to here ideally he should be on top of this building if you see him kill him in one hit and you will get the mask it is however worth noting that if you do spook him and he runs away, there are a few other locations he can spawn. He'll basically move to different locations around the vicinity. And if you're looking for him, one of the things you can do to look out for this is actually pay attention to your UI. Sometimes the music changes, of course, to indicate hunter presence, but also if your UI starts to get static, it means they are in the vicinity. So what you can then do is visit a couple of these locations. Here's a few other places that I've actually seen them in our first attempt. In fact, this actually took us about three or four different attempts to try and get this second hunter. So for this one, what we did was we then moved on to this building over here, you see on the map. Basically seems that the hunters like to pick rooftops as places to hide. So sometimes you might see him up here. There's also a cafe very nearby where you may well see him on the roof of this building. Again, marked on the map. And sometimes you might even see him on top of the crates back near the Washington Monument. So essentially, if you don't see him here or if you spook him and he runs away, what you kind of want to do is start working around the immediate vicinity. Since it's going to be nighttime, you might as well make use of that time and pay attention for when your UI goes static and see if he shows up. If he does, shoot him, kill him, grab the mask. If he doesn't, same principle as last time, go back and wait a new day cycle, log out, log back in interact with the button in the Washington Monument and then go looking for him again. Now, moving on from there to speak about the Midas and the Revenant masks. These ones, of course, if you saw the videos the other day, you would have seen these. But if you haven't, then you want to go over to the west side of the map, to the location you see marked right here. You'll then walk into this area, into this opening, and there will be this shallow swimming pool. You go and stand in the middle of this, and you perform jumping jacks. And upon doing this, two hunters will spawn. You kill both of them, and upon killing them, you will get the Midas and the Revenant masks. Moving on from there, we're then going to be talking about the ghoul masks. Now, for these ones, if you saw the video the other day, then of course you would have seen these. However, there are a couple of things that I found out since then. So any of the confusion points from the original video, I have since corrected them. So if you want to watch through, then of course you can get the updated information. This one, in order to get this, what you want to do is go to the bottom left-hand corner of the map over near the Lincoln Memorial. To the north of that, there is actually an SHD cache marked on the map. If you go over to that one, you will then head down a sewer entrance, you will walk through a tunnel, and you will basically get into this room, this hideout, this sort of division agent hideout. There is a laptop on the desk, and if you go over there and interact with the laptop, a light bulb will turn on, and you'll then see a cross on the map. This is obviously the location that you are basically in right now, and there's also a small crescent moon above it. This basically indicates that you need to do this at night, and there's actually quite a few of these ones that you have to do at night time, so... If it's daytime, you can do this first part. You can go and activate the laptop, but you will need to wait for it to be nighttime for the following bits. Once you've done this, there is some loot in this room. You can go and collect it if you want to. But once you've activated the laptop, you then want to leave from where you came. And you then want to head down here on the map. You will, of course, see the, uh, the body of water down the middle of it. And you then get to a part where there is this small structure, this small kind of scaffolding, and there's a light bulb hanging there flashing. If it's nighttime, what you want to do is shoot this. And upon shooting it, a smoke cloud will appear. And just like a ninja, a hunter will appear. Now, the hunters are tough if you guys are new for Division 2 and you haven't fought them before. They basically behave like players. And if you have fought them, then you guys know what to expect. They're around level 35, so do not go into this lightly. But once they spawn, you then need to fight them. They have a lot of gadgets, they have a lot of tools, but once you've taken them down, he will then drop his mask. And the first one is the Ghoul Mask. Now for the second one, what you want to do is go to the far east of the map. This location I have marked right here, it's just to the right of the safe house. And you actually get to this memorial that has a load of veteran names on the wall. Now, in order to do this one, what you have to do is there's a light that is shining on the names and that's to your kind of back left when you're facing this wall. You need to shoot this to take it out so that the names are no longer illuminated. And then what you need to do is step out of the water, step behind the light and salute. In the original video, I said that it seemed like you needed to salute six times and then one of my friends did it and they triggered it. That's because I was standing in the water. You don't need to salute six times. You simply need to take out the light step out, step behind, salute the memorial, and then the hunter will spawn. 
Same principle as last time, take him out and he will drop his mask. And this mask is the Wraith Mask. Now for the next one, for the Crimson Mask, what you're going to do is you're going to go over to the northeast section of the map. This is just to the right of the Stronghold and you'll actually see this building marked right here. What you want to do is you want to go into the courtyard and you then want to start by looking at these two doorways and there's a mirror outside. This is where you want to begin. You then want to go inside here and at the desk there is a computer that you can interact with. And upon doing this you then want to turn around and you want to run the opposite side of the courtyard into the other room through the other door. And there will then be another option for you to interact with the phone on the following side. Upon doing that, you will again turn around and see a cloud in the middle of the courtyard and the next hunter has spawned and upon killing him, you will get the Crimson Mask. Now for this next one, this is a bit of a madness because you are going to spawn three hunters. What you want to do is you want to go over to the location you see marked on the map right now, just north of the control point. It's inside this park, there is a Christmas tree in the middle of it. And what you want to do, again, this one has to be done at night time. Basically, if ever you go somewhere and you can't interact with the thing you're seeing in the video, it means you have to do it at night time. So in this situation, what you do is you go up the stairs and you will find behind the counter there is a lever. If you try to go here during the day, you physically won't be able to interact with it. But if you do it at night time or when it becomes dusk, you pull the lever, you then want to go back to the middle and you want to run around the Christmas tree a few times. And upon doing this, you will then hear the clouds, you will then see the hunter spawn, and you then get not one, not two, but three different hunters. They behave differently, they have different moves, they have different weapons, but all three of these hunters have their own respective masks. So as you can imagine, fighting one hunter is quite a challenge in itself. This time fighting three is quite hectic. But once you've taken them all down, you will get the cross mask, the diamond mask and also the death mask. However, there is one more component to this and I mentioned in my original video that at the time I wasn't entirely sure how this worked. I mentioned that the three of these hunters spawned and then because we were split apart because they were giving us kind of some trouble, we ran out into the street and then we encountered a fourth hunter, which was the phantom mask. Now, again, I'm not entirely sure whether he is linked to this spawn. What I will say is I've since gone and done this with some other friends and the phantom spawned again. So what I will say is that it seems he is somewhat linked to this encounter. So my best advice for you is that once you dealt with the three in the Christmas tree, what you want to do is you want to go to the right, to the east of the park, to this map that I showed you previously. And this is reliably where the Phantom spawns. It's where he spawned both times that I've done this with different groups of people. Every time along this road, he's been out there typically engaging with some enemies. He might have moved a little bit because do bear in mind the hunters do get into fights with enemies but this is where he spawns. So basically, as soon as you've done those three masks, go to this location and hopefully you'll get the Phantom Mask. And then for the final one, what you then want to do is go over to the location you see on the map. This is to the east of the White House, just the right of the control point. In order to access this area, this is the sort of like interior shopping area, this glass atrium. You actually have to go around the building, go down the escalators, and then you get into this area. And then if you get up into the platform where you see me standing right now and look at the windows to the west, you will see there are four different targets. Now, if you shoot them from top to bottom, you have to shoot high to low, shoot each four of them, and upon shooting the fourth one, the hunter will spawn. This one works during the daytime, so you don't have to do this at night. He spawns, you kill him, and upon killing him, you will then get the demon mask. So there you have it. That's a rundown of how to get all 12 hunter masks. Now, it is kind of annoying because they don't always seem to reliably drop the ivory keys, so I'm still looking for ivory keys but at least on the mask front i now have the full suite of 12. so if you guys had any questions or you were trying to get all of these this is what you need to know so hopefully you found this helpful be sure to keep it locked for plenty more division coverage thanks very much for watching guys i hope you enjoyed the video if you want to check out some more awesome stuff from us here at arix gaming then you should definitely try to catch 269 and paradise central streaming six days a week you can find a link to the multi-stream in the description box down below. They play a wide range of games, and what's more, we also have the end game store. By watching their streams, you earn currency, and you can redeem that currency on the end game store for really cool prizes. Those can range from things like games, comics, and figures, all the way up to controllers, capture cards, and even consoles. So definitely drop by and become part of the community. Of course, if you enjoyed this video, then make sure you're subscribed and be sure to click on that little bell icon to turn on notifications so you don't miss our next upload. You can watch more videos by clicking on the options here. But once again, thanks very much for watching. Take it easy. Catch you next time. Peace out.